All right. Thanks for coming to another Cigar Chat, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> I'm your host, Rob, from uh, Robbie Raz Reviews, as always. Uh, Co-host is uh, Logan Lawler down there on the bottom uh, left of your screen. And uh, today we've got uh, Cremo Cigars, um, Mark Germany. And, Mark, you're the uh, director of sales, correct? Correct. I'll, I'll do the uh, director of sales nationwide as well as uh, internationally as well. Uh, well, the good news is the uh, my neighbor has a... Uh, yard work service, and they just showed up. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I will make sure to mute my uh, to mute my um, my microphone. But uh, so, Mark, thanks for coming on. Uh, we've got uh, Walter Santiago. Uh, he's the president, and he's uh, <clears throat> he's trying to join us. We've had some some conflict in scheduling, so uh, we're trying to get uh, Walter on. Hopefully, he'll be uh, able to join us at some point. But uh, we'll just have to go with Mark. We're stuck with Mark today. Um, so, Mark, give us a little bit of background on Cremo for. Anybody who's watching in the chat room or uh, watching on YouTube right now that, that may not know about Cremo Cigars. And first of all, I'm saying it right, right? It's Cremo, correct? Cremo. Okay. Um, yeah, Cremo Cigars was a was the number one cigar manufacturer early in the early 19th or the early 20th, 20th century. Um, they started out all handmade, and they sold their cigars at that time for five cents a piece. They were based out of New York, and about that time, uh, in the later 1920s, the great spit debate came out uh, revolving around spit capping the cigars. And uh, there was a huge ad campaign that came out adversely talking about spit capping the cigars. And this is before vegetable gum was used to apply the caps and to, uh, to seal the seams and so on and so forth. Um, so at that point in time, Cremo cigars went machine made. And... Um, the kiss of death, and um, so later on down the line, um, Walter, being a New York native, saw a um, a big mural in New York um, on the side of a building that said Cremo Cigars, and at that point in time, he was just inspired by the whole thing and decided to start his own uh, cigar company, and um, from there, he uh, he approached Sandy Cobus at El Titan de Bronze and uh, Willie Herrera, who is now with Drew Estate, who used to work for El Titan de Bronze. Um, they blended a stick for us. Um, that stick came out to be the closest thing we could we could imagine getting to a Cuban cigar, and it's been a hit for us ever since. Um, so that's just a, kind of a little bit of background for you, and um, we've been working very hard and getting the ball rolling from there. So um, <clears throat> I was actually talking with Mark earlier. Uh, he sent to Logan and I a package, including a few cigars, to, to try and review. And Logan's actually done his review, but I've been slacking, so I haven't posted it yet. But we'll post it up right after the show. Um, here's yep. that, the, the actual, uh, and this is the same thing that you were talking about, correct? The mural that was on the side of the building? Correct. Yeah. The, the, now, that one's you... actually in Washington. <clears throat> okay, so this is a different one. So correct. That's a different mural. Um, there are a lot of murals all over the United States that are actually still intact. Hmm. That makes for good uh, good marketing that you guys don't even have to put any money for it. Then. That's <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Free advertising. Right? <laughs> um. So, <clears throat> I'm uh, getting my first my first taste of the cigar uh, right now, and as you guys can see, I mean that burn is pretty. That's pretty perfect. I'm about. I don't know what time is it? I'm about 20 minutes in, I guess. And uh, Logan, I'm gonna let Logan talk about it a little bit more because he's uh, <clears throat> he's taking the time to, to really to really review it. I'm just enjoying it today. But um, Cuban ask that was one of the things that Logan said when we were talking earlier about the way that he described it. Why don't you tell us what you thought, Logan? Um, yeah, I mean that's you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Like when we were talking about the cigar before the show, I said, hey, you know, I really don't want to compare it to other cigars, but you know, it was probably the most Cuban esque cigar I've ever smoked. So. It was funny that I, I, you know, I came up with that, and that that's the way I felt about the cigar. And I, I think it's pretty awesome that, without knowing that was kind of the goal of the cigar, that's exactly, you hit the nail on the head. So, I mean, it's very Cuban-esque. It's got a little bit of earth, got a little bit of cream, got a little bit of spice. But, I mean, I mean, other than damn tasty, I don't know really what to say. I mean, it was just, it was just good. It's a damn good cigar. Thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, what we did in the, in the blending process, uh, Willie Herrera selected a... Habano wrapper, a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper. It has a Nicaraguan binder and then a mix of Nicaraguan and Dominican fillers. Um, the Dominican is what really brings it down in power. Um, 
it was really initially blended to be a full-bodied stick. And, um, you know, in a good way, it didn't turn out that way. And in a not-so-good way, we did want it to be a full-bodied stick. Um, but it came out actually being just so unique. And, you know, out of all honesty, I really don't – I've smoked so many cigars in my lifetime, and I've smoked a lot of Cubans, and I haven't found anything on the market that's this close to a Cuban cigar out there. Um, I'm not going to specify exactly where we get our tobaccos from. Um, you know, it's kind of like telling somebody your secret recipe. Um, but I will say this. Um, we were very selective in the process of, of where they came from and what we were looking for, and we got exactly that. Um, and, and the feedback on it has just been through the roof from bloggers, reviewers all over the nation have just thoroughly enjoyed what we've had to offer and we're very thankful to everybody for that. Um, and like I said, it's just really gotten the ball rolling for us and it's, um, it's been quite the ride. Um, <clears throat> yeah, one thing, there's a flavor that I pick up occasionally and I usually pick it up in cigars that I really like. And again, I'm going to apologize for the noise in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. Um, but it tastes like like a honeyed piece of toast. Like toast, toast bread, you put a little bit of honey on it. And that's that kind of sweetness that I get in the background. There's probably a better way to say it, but that's what I get. And that's one of those flavors that I really like. It's got a, There's a nice spice. Starting to build, like I said, I'm about a third of the way, no, not even a third of the way, a quarter of the way through. Spice starting to build up, settle on the tongue. Real nice profile, a lot of balance, very creamy. This is, uh, I mean, I definitely wouldn't call it a full body, um, but I think, like you said, that the, uh, the Domin it was Dominican leaf that's in there that, that probably pulls it down a little bit. But this, I mean, the balance is really nice. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And, you know, i got to say, we offer three sizes in the Cremo Classic blend. We offer the Robusto, which I think you're smoking, Robbie. Um, the Robusto being a 50 ring, you're going to get a little bit of that wrapper flavor and a lot of the filler flavor. And it, the Robusto is probably the most rounded blend out of all of them. My favorites are, are Magnum Opus, which is the uh, Corona Gorda. It's a uh, five and three quarters by 46 ring. With that 46 ring gauge, you really get a lot of that wrapper flavor, and that's actually, in my opinion, the spiciest out of the bunch. Uh, but the cool thing about that Corona Gorda is it has a lot of floral notes on the back end um, that makes it just unique compared to really anything else out there. And then the um, the Toro, which is the favorite of Lilo and the favorite of our uh, chief operations officer, um, uh, Josh, He um, that's their favorite because it gives you the best of all of it. Um, the, the Toro is really the most complex. Um, the Corona, in my opinion, is just old faithful for me. It's just, it's, it's the one that, that has the most appealing flavors to me. Yeah, I was, uh, I, I got some messages from, uh, <clears throat> from Cremo Cigars on Instagram today when I posted up some photos and they were, uh, I'm not sure who was running it. I'm not sure if it was you or if it was, uh, it was Walter, but they were suggesting that I smoke the, uh, smoke the Toro during the show tonight uh, because they said that that was their favorite blend but I've decided I, I am going with the, the Robusto because um, I did just get them today they've been traveling for a few days and if I want to review the Toro this is just kind of practice for me but uh, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to the Toro but this is I mean the flavors and this is really I, I can't the, the burn is perfect and, and the ash nice ash it's, I mean it's, it looks like it's gonna fall off here a little bit but um, I'm we impressed have a lot so far. Of pictures posted on our Facebook page of people doing long ashes and so on and so forth, and and where we get that from is at El Titan de Bronze Factory, which is in Little Havana in Miami, Florida. Um, there's only six rollers there. Um, it's been in business uh, for about 15 years, I believe, and all the rollers are level nine Cuban rollers. And a level nine Cuban roller is somebody that's had a minimum of five years experience, um, has rolled for ma major Cuban companies such as. Partagas or Cohiba, um, and they've they've taught understudies and so on and so forth. And all of our cigars are rolled in tubato, which the leaf is rolled within itself um, to ensure a better burn. And I'm going to tell you this: is as long as we've had this stick out, I've never had a single one come back. And I stand by this: I've never had a single one come back with anybody saying they've had a draw issue. I've never had one plugged. I've never had a single quality issue out of any of our cigars and I really stand behind that that's very important to us 
Sorry for the little delays. I, I'm <clears throat> making sure that my microphone is muted while they do all their yard work. But um, yeah, that was another thing that I wanted to comment on. Not only are the uh, I, I can't get over. Your, I'm a graphic designer by trade, so your, your marketing materials are very impressive to me. You guys, you display your product very well, and these matches. <clears throat> I really, I'm a big matches guy. I don't get to use them all that often, but these matches, they, I mean, they come in a nice package. You got the logo on there. Very simple, but. It's a nice size match. <clears throat> it's not your standard. You can get those cigar matches that are, you know, they end up being like that long. You don't really get any use out of it. But this is, I mean, these, I'm going to put these to good use. And, and the next time I need some matches, I'm calling you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it, little things like that. I mean, those, those kind of things turn me on. But anyway, um, I'm going to pass. Uh, Logan's got some questions from the audience. I'm going to pass it over to him. Right yep. On. So Mark got a couple questions. The first one is, um, someone asked, you know, since the cigars are rolled in the U.S., does that actually have an impact on the price point and raise it up? And just wondering if that does kind of the comparison between rolling it in Little Havana versus rolling it in, say, Nicaragua or Honduras or somewhere overseas. Well, I will say rolling in the U.S. is, is it has its advantages and it has its disadvantages, the disadvantage being that it is expensive. Um, and, that, and, you know, we got to pay our U.S. people a good old-fashioned U.S. wage. And... I support that personally, and I think that's very important. Um, also, a benefit to us rolling in Miami is is Walter being based out of Miami. Um, he's able to be at the factory every single day um, to see what's going on, to look over quality control, and that's how we get a burn that looks as good as that. Um, that's how we ensure that we don't have cigars coming back for defects. Um, on the disadvantage side of is is again, it's very expensive, um, but. We are at that point where we're really, really focused on making sure going into this market that we are providing an, a quality product that, that far exceeds just about anything else out there that you can get. Um, it means the world to us that our customers be satisfied. Right, absolutely. No, agreed. And, you know, I, yeah, you know, and that makes sense. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of advantages to doing it, but it's one of those things, you know, you kind of pay what you get for, you know. You get what you pay for, right? So obviously the quality and everything you're saying, it makes sense that it would cost more, right? Because you're not Absolutely. getting duds, you're not getting bad burned, you're not getting plugged cigars. Someone asked, um, you know, with rolling in the in the U.S., since you said you had six, you know, rollers, are you limited to, you know, production with them 100 or, you know, 100 a day? Or, you know, what's the production output for those six rollers? 125 per roller per day. And it's depending on our, our, our construction needs. Um, there are times where we need to roll more. There are times where we need to re roll less. Um, it just kind of depends on where we're at um, in sales in that particular part of the month. Um, right now, we're actually currently working on some new blends. And um, we've, we've produced what we need uh, to get us through for a couple new months while we work on our new blends. Um, but we have an inventory system that allows us to look at what we've got and restart production. El Titan de Bronze actually does a lot of different cigar manufacturers that are out there right now. Um, for instance, La Polina, um, they just did the Goldie for them. Um, they do Premier Mundo. They're doing all four lines, the new Padilla line. Um, so they're a very busy factory. Um, but the cool thing is that they're able to balance for us when we need production and when the others need production as well. Um, there are times that, that we can get by. We have one primary roller named Juan. Um, he does the majority of our rolling. Um, basically, if we call in and say, okay, we need you to produce X amount of sticks, those are assigned to him first. And depending on time constraints, it goes to other rollers depending on where it needs to go from there. Um, but I would say the majority of our product comes from one roller. Okay. No, very, very cool. Um, someone asked, they heard a little a rumor that you guys were coming out with the Maduro line. True, false, or no comment? <laughs> that is true. Um, there will be a Maduro that we are coming out with from El Titan de Bronze Factory. Um, I'm not going to give a whole lot of specifics on it, but we are going to be going to a very full-bodied stick. Um, but what we want to offer is a full-bodied stick that's smokable by everybody. Um, what I found, you know, as a when I was a beginner cigar smoker is I wanted to smoke the full body sticks um, but some of them were just so powerful um, and so spicy that I just couldn't handle them. Um, now this day and age of course that's completely different um, but what we wanted to offer was a Maduro that was very strong in power, very strong in nicotine, but yet something that the general public 
even, you know, you're not so seasoned cigar smokers could enjoy and smoke and have a great time with. That's very so cool. We, uh, sorry, I'm cutting you off, Logan. Nope. I, Logan's taking over for me while the noise is going on in the background. But I'm uh, I'm showing this photo. This uh, this you guys posted this up on Facebook two days ago, I think. And these are right. some of your test blends that you guys are rocking out. So I mean, I'm I'm thinking that maybe all the way on the left there, that's the uh, that looks like the Maduro. Yeah, the two left ones are um, Maduros coming out of LT Tonde Bronze, and then the one on the right. Um, is actually an even bigger secret right now, um, but I'm not afraid to drop a hint or two for you. Um, we're experimenting. We're experimenting, experimenting with a um, another factory. Um, I'm not going to divulge any names on that one. Um, but what we are trying to accommodate with that one on the far right is a value-oriented stick that we're wanting to introduce at the market between six to seven dollars. Um, I will. I will tell you what the wrapper is. We're looking at a Habano Rosado wrapper. Mm. Um, it's not too common in a Habano form. There's a lot of Rosado wrappers out there, uh, but with the Habano Rosado, is something a little different that we are only able to get from this one particular factory um, and this one particular tobacco source. Um, but the great thing is, is we're going to be able to offer it at a value that we're not able to offer our current blends. Um, they'll still be rolled with the same Primo construction. That's very important to us. Um, but we're very happy that we're going to be able to offer it between six to seven dollars, maybe maybe seven fifty, just kind of depending on what the final number ends up coming out. We are uh, currently doing bids with them to see what we can uh, come to an agreement with. That's uh, that's good. I mean, very cool. Going to a Maduro wrapper, that's uh, that's always a good step, especially for me. I, I love Maduros. I mean, I wrap just about anything in a Maduro wrapper, and I'd smoke it. Um, but uh, it's 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 nice to hear you're going in two different directions. You're going with something that's going to be a little bit more more powerful, probably more high end, I would imagine, right. um, and then something that's a little more affordable. That's it. Just seems like a good business plan to me. Well, and I'll tell you this: the um, the stuff that's going to be coming out of El Titan de Bronze Factory from here from here on out, uh, with exclusion to our current blend, which is the Cremo Classic, um, the stuff that's going to be coming out of El Titan is going to be more focused on the ultra boutique um, rolled in very very small batches and we're probably going to limit what comes out of there um, and then we'll rely very heavily on our um, our value oriented blend which will still be only available to brick and mortar stores um, the the only place online that you'll be able to find our cigars is on our website um, you can buy direct from us um, and, and the way we kind of got around with that and, and not upsetting our brick and mortar customers was to offer the cigars online at MSRP with no discount, um, which actually makes it more viable for the customer to buy it from the B&M. Um, it's easier to get. You don't have to wait for it to get there. Um, and we've got a lot of really good response out of the brick and mortar companies out of doing that. That's very cool. I have, I have, a, quick, I have a quick question for you real fast. Is that... You know, you know, I'm in support of local business, but you know, I, I'm also I like to think I'm a realist and know that people do do their shopping online. So I really like the fact that you you do offer, and I think it's fair. You know, you're not undercutting the people you're doing business with. That makes total sense. But a question, kind of on that, you know, I m the closest cigar shop for me is you know it's a pretty good trek. It's like probably 20 miles. You know, I like buying online. I'm an Amazon Prime kind of guy. Do you feel that whenever you kind of really focus at you know brick and mortar, it limits your sales? And but what I mean by that is like you, I don't go to a brick and mortar like most cigars I bought at my local shops maybe two or three. Where online I might spend three hundred dollars because I'm playing around and I didn't realize what the hell I just did. Do you feel like that hurts or helps? Well, let me tell you why we sell online. Um, I guess that would that would probably better answer this question. The the sole reason that we offer our cigars online on our website is to accommodate the customers that don't have our cigar in their local B&M yet. Um, being a newer company like we are, um, we're not in every B&M across the United States yet. I mean, that's something that we're working on, but uh, to be completely realistic about it, you can't walk into every single B&M that's out there yet and find a Cremo cigar. Um, and that's a good thing because we don't want it to be oversaturated in the market. However, um, we do want the average customer that can get a hold of it in their local B&M 
to be able to grab a hold of our cigar. Um, you can go online to cremocigars.com forward slash shop. Um, we have anything from samplers starting at 25, which is one of each size. That's three cigars. We have five packs uh, available for each size, or you can buy by the box. It, for just from I know that was Logan's that was Logan's question and <laughs> yeah question. sorry I mean it's, oh, I know <laughs> hey man we're not here to play around we're here to ask the tough questions man I'm Walter Cronkite dude <laughs> I don't I don't know I just you know and I respect that and I I, I really do appreciate because I know a company that I'm I'm very fond of, I won't say the name but they don't sell online anymore and they want to support local B and M's and that's great but for me to get their cigar it's a great cigar but it's hard for me to drive, and the fact that you guys sell online but do it in a respectful way, I, I appreciate, and I think it's a very cool idea in which more companies did it personally. And it's, it's very important for us to be able to get, that, get out there to everybody, and we've had a couple of other um, of online cigar companies approach us and say, hey, um, would you be interested in selling your stick online? And we toyed around with the idea with one company, but we, we just couldn't come to an agreement, and um, it just... Number one, we don't we don't want our our cigar saturated. Um, we don't want to have to overproduce to meet the demand. Um, we want to ensure that the quality is perfect every single time. That's I mean, like I said, that's just hugely important to us. Um, but at the same time, we want to offer somewhat of an outlet for those people that really want to get a hold of our cigars to actually get a hold of them in the easiest way possible. Very cool. And those would be your customers in California, because I'll tell you, man. Right. I, I mean, I live in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, very well populated, lots of money here. Um, there are not a lot of good cigar shops out here. There's, I mean, there's some nice lounges you can go and you can, you know, you can uh, pick up your anejo and smoke that, or, or you know, uh, buy an opus or something. But to find, I guess I should, I should scratch that and say, not too many that carry much by way of boutique lines um, and I, they're, they're chopping down the tree or something next door this is unbelievable um, but no I think you guys have found a nice a nice medium where you're you're in the market you're in B&M's and that's where everybody wants to be but there's limited shelf space there's only so many places you can be so you're selling it online at the right price and it just sounds like a good way to, to take care of your customers we don't want to step on anybody's toes and you mentioned something you you hit the magic word on the head is shelf space a, a lot of these retailers um, you know I'm I'm in full belief that we are in the middle of the next big cigar boom a lot of people will tell you differently boom um, I agree I was asked I, this question I, sorry I really do and with the result of this new cigar boom that we're going through um, your average cigar smoker isn't an average cigar smoker anymore um, your average cigar smoker has become obsessed and they want to try the newest, greatest things. They're smoking three and four sticks a day. And the result of that is the B&Ms are really having to respond to that, and they have stuffed their shelves absolutely full of product, um, which is good in a sense that it gives the customer variety, um, but at the same time, it, it does saturate the market a little bit, and make it, it makes it almost difficult for a customer to walk in there and go, oh, crap, what do I want? Um, you know, you've only got 400 faces to choose from when you walk in there, um, but that's not a bad thing. I mean, options are good, um, especially for the smoker that's not smoking the same thing every single day, um, except for me, which I smoke cremos every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, that's, I love that you say that because I always ask the question, it, you know, do you feel like we're in the middle of a cigar boom? And I, I agree with you. I feel that we're not in the middle of a, a per se cigar boom. I think it's more of a boutique boom. And yeah. you're exactly right. You're t the person you just described is me to the core. Like I want to try different blends. I want to. I want to experience it all. Like I used to be, you know, a CI Nation fanboy, and I bought their garbage, you know, all the time. And I didn't know any better. And now I know what's out there. You know, I do want to try everything. And I, kind of along those lines, like, you know, like you said, you know, shelves are packed. There's. It's really hard. You know, when you're at a B and M to have somebody that knows, I mean, to be honest with you, knowledgeable to say, hey, you should try this, you should try that. There's so much out there. Do you feel like boutiques like yourself are at a disadvantage against the, the general cigar, the alternative cigars of the world where everyone knows Partagas, everyone knows Cohiba? Do you feel like you're at a disadvantage with that? 
No. And the reason is, is I think the generation that has relied on Altidus and General Cigar for years and years and years to get the cigar they want over and over, I think that generation is on their way out. I really do. Um, you're starting to see the next generation of cigar smoker as young as 21 even I've seen. Um, if you if you were to go to our Facebook page and, and be on our admin sign and, and see what the average demographic is for us, it's actually very wide. It's from 25 to 45. And those people aren't smoking the same old, same old anymore. Your old faithful, um, which would, would come from those big cigar manufacturers such as General and Altidus, um, they're not your old faithful anymore. These people are the ones that are trying every new Tatuaje that comes out, every new Illusion, every new Drew Estate product. And I, I definitely got to give props to Jonathan Drew. I mean, he's done amazing things in this market. Um, and, you know, I mentioned earlier Willie Herrera, who blended our, our blend, um, blended the new Herrera Esteli for Drew Estate. Um, I'm really glad and happy to see him go on to bigger, bigger and better things with Drew Estate. I think that's hugely important. Um, but as for the boutique market, um, a lot of the, the brands that were boutique aren't boutique anymore. That's true. Um, Tatawai is not, in my opinion. And they do, they do offer their blends. Um, true that come out so on and so forth that that come out in a very limited run that are boutique and I think that's very important and I and I, that's another person I definitely envy in this industry is Pete Johnson he it, I mean he's done amazing work and um, I really really respect what him Jonathan Drew um, John Giolato have all done with this industry as far as boutiques go they're able to create a product that's not quite what I would call mass um, but they offer just enough for everybody in the, in the nation to get a hold of it. Yep, very, very true. I was going to ask, you mentioned, you know, Willie Herrera. Ha, you know, how has that impacted you guys since he's left? I mean, obviously there's no ill will or anything like that, but do you you feel like that hurt or helped you or gave you the, well, a kick in the butt or what? I'll tell you this. There's nothing more that I would want than for Willie Herrera to be a part of this forever. Um, but... Um, at the same time, him leaving is doing a very amazing thing um, for not only us, but for LT Don de Bronze Factory as a whole, um, because what they're having to do is bring in outside blenders. Um, for instance, um, on our new blends, Walter and I are both very involved with the blending process. Neither one of us are master blenders, I will tell you, um, but we have gotten involved. Um, we've been working with other blenders, and we've been learning from the process, so in the future, we're going to be able to do the blending on our own, and that's going to be very, that's cool. going to be very huge for us. It's very cool. Yeah, you know, no, I mean, I think that, and that's what you know I love about the cigar industry in general is just, you know, hanging out, the collaboration, you know, and everyone doesn't know everything, right? And bringing in those new thoughts, you get a ton of cool ideas. Someone asked in the in the chat, and I always love to ask this question too. We we're talking about boutiques. Like, how do you actually define what a boutique cigar company is? Is it everyone just outside of general, or is it under so many cigars a year, or how many blends, or how new they are? How, how do you define that? I'm going to define it a little bit different than you probably heard before. Um, boutique means to me, and for, for 10 years of my life, I spent my life working in retail management. And I've worked in everything from big corporate retailers to boutique retailers. And to me, boutique defines something that you can't get everywhere and something that's very special. That's different. I've never <laughs> I've never heard it defined like that because, you know, everyone has a different definition of boutique. Some is, you know, 20,000 cigars a year. Hell, I saw on Cigars International, they defined, uh, I love Alec Bradley, but Alec Bradley is a boutique. Come on. You know what I mean? Like, right. So that's good. I, I actually like that. When you think about it, it's true. It's not available everywhere. It's a good point. It's and, and special is the magic word there. I mean, it's just. I mean, I don't even. I couldn't even tell you how many cigars a year I smoke. It's, it's probably an ungodly amount that I probably. I probably myself don't even want to know. Um, nor do I want to know how much I've spent on cigars in the last couple of years. Um, but what what I will say is the ones that have stuck out the most to me are the ones that are the most special. The ones that I can't go and pick up at every single B and M. Now, don't get me wrong. Ultimately. Um, I would love to have the goal to be in every B&M, but I'm going to tell you this, is we're always going to offer boutique cigars. Now, later on down the line, if we offer a mass production cigar that everybody can carry, that's wonderful. But I will tell you, we will always offer a very special, very unique blend that is, is going to be a prized possession for people to get their hands on. 
Very cool. Very true. Yep. Logan, thank you for uh, for carrying me. It's been, it's been crazy loud over here, but now that there's quiet for a second, I want to talk for a little bit. Oh, jump in for Robbie. Robbie, uh, if it makes you feel any better, I can't hear any yard work going on over there. Well, I, I'm, <laughs> I've, I've been strictly muted, strictly <laughs> muted, but it's uh, they're chopping a tree down or something. It's crazy. Um, I do want to say that, just kind of preface, we did not go over these questions with Mark before the interview. You have answers ready for everything, man. You're good it's at true. this. true. <laughs> um, and, I, you know, part of the reason for that is is I'm very passionate about this business. Um, you know, I never in a million years, I, I didn't wake up as a kid and say, oh, I want to be a cigar manufacturer when I grow up. You know, that was, that was never in my dreams. I wanted to be a fighter pilot, but, of course, as you can see, I wear glasses, and, of course, you can't have bad vision and fly a fighter jet, so... That wasn't going to happen, and then I wanted to be a physical therapist, and that didn't happen. Um, but basically what happened, um, again, I told you guys I was working retail, and holiday season after holiday season will just wear your ass out. And uh, one day, I was um, I was in the middle of a 14-hour stretch working as the store manager of a, of a certain retailer, and uh, man, it was just a crazy day right before Christmas, and I took a lunch break and went to my local cigar lounge, and I had a drink and smoked a cigar, and I just didn't go back. I said, you know what? I'm not going to do this, and at that moment, I realized that doing this made me happy, and I wanted to be very involved in that, and uh, from there, my passion grew. Um, I worked for a little while doing some other things, but all the while, um, I, I was even at one time a blogger for a different cigar publication, and um, I worked in a uh, cigar a cigar lounge for quite some time, and um, when Walter approached me about this, I was like, I have to jump in uh, head first, and I've made a full investment into the company, and um, it's it's just been very huge for me, and um, a life changing experience, and it's something that um, I hope doesn't end anytime soon. It's it's been quite the ride. That uh, that story of of leaving on your lunch break during Christmas and not going back. Coming from a guy who spent many a Christmas working in retail, I uh, <laughs> I know I, I I know exactly what you're talking about. I never did that, but uh, yeah, that's that's I could see where uh, <clears throat> where that would happen. Take um, this job and shove it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, man, those. It's y'all remember just... uh, y'all remember Demolition Man where uh, Sandra Bullock said that line? She goes, "You can take this job and shovel it." <laughs> Love it. That's Love what that it. reminds me of. <laughs> Um, first Sandra Bullock mention on the show ever, by the way. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> she, lives, she lives in Austin, Texas. Does she really? I didn't know that. Yeah, she was married to that Jesse James guy, and they lived right outside of Austin. I don't know if she does anymore, but she did. Still very hot for her age, absolutely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no arguments. No arguments. See, we talk about everything here. I like so my girlfriend's gonna watch this later. She's probably gonna be upset with me, but... That's alright. It's will be alright. It's alright. Um... So I want to get back to the cigar here. I'm uh, <clears throat> getting down to the just down to the band. I, I, I'm I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with the cigar. But um, we talked about this a little bit, and you guys have something going on on your Facebook page. Why don't you uh, give everybody the uh, the details on that? Absolutely. Uh, right now we're doing a contest. If you go to our Facebook page, um, visit our fan page at Cromo Cigars. Um, you can actually um, uh, find a link to it on my page. I'm under facebook.com forward slash Mark Germany, or you can go directly to uh, facebook.com forward slash Cremo dash cigars. Um, all you got to do, it's very simple, like our page. Um, we're at 825 likes right now. Once we hit 1,000 likes, we're going to be giving away a free box of cigars um, of any size of your choice, um, and we'll, we'll give that to a random follower. Um, that that's picked completely at random. Hey, you'll be able to uh, check out the Robbie Raz Reviews Facebook page. We'll link up to that uh, later this evening as well. Once uh, once I post Logan's review, um, well, that's great. That's a good giveaway. Um, I mean, a full box. That's that's pretty generous. Absolutely. Um, we're only 175 likes away, so we should be there very soon. Cool. Very cool. Uh, okay, Logan. I know you got a couple other things. No. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's not. Uh, it was kind of a, just a curiosity question. You said that you kind of wrote for, you know, other, like, cigar publications, which is very cool. You know, that's how I think a lot of people get started with the blogging and stuff. I'm curious, you know, on your blends, like the test blends that you're doing, um, 
you know, how, how do you guys go about evaluating them? Is it people in the company? Do you send, you know, samples out to, you know, bloggers or people to test and get feedback on, like unbanded? And this is my shameless plug to say, hey, if you need uh, someone to evaluate stuff, I'm more than willing to. Hey, we'll definitely keep you in mind, by all means. And what's important to me is, for instance, um, I was on a Facebook page of another cigar manufacturer uh, recently, and I was on the the actual CEO of the cigar company, and he was talking about testing blends, and he posted a lot of pictures of them just smoking the very first inch of the cigar and then throwing it out. Um, to me, that that's BS. Um, I smoke every one of our test blends down to the nub um, because, to me, the first inch doesn't tell you crap. Today, I smoked a test sample um, that, whenever I first smoked it, the very first inch was just overpowering. I was just like, oh my god, I can't handle this. But after that first inch, it was the most amazing smoke that I've smoked in a long time. It just, it absolutely blew me away. And had I not smoked it past that first inch, I would have never have known that. And uh, we ultimately ended up approving that blend. Um, but as, as for who smokes them, Lilo smokes them, I smoke them, our uh, director of operations, Josh, smokes them. Um, and then the few that we have left over, um, I like to share with, um, for instance, there's a cigar shop right down the house from me. Um, they're a huge advocate of our cigars. They've been very, they were actually our very first B&M account that we ever opened. Um, and I'll give them a shout out, Havana Gym Cigars. And um, the, the store manager there, Linza Jones, um, he's one of those guys that makes it a point to make sure our product moves. And... So whenever I got these test samples in, I was like, well, who else do I want to try these? The first person I went to was Lenza um, because he cares about the brand and he helps us move that brand. And, you know, I, I could definitely confide in him to give us uh, his honest opinion. So not, our, not only are we, are we as the cigar manufacturer evaluating these test blends, um, but we are actually looking for some outside, outside input. Um, for instance, even even as much as family, um, Lilo likes to smoke his test blends with his his father-in-law, um, with his brother-in-law, so on and so forth, um, because not only do they care about the company, but at the same time, they're going to give us their honest opinion. They're not afraid to tell us if something's crap. Um, and true. I'm going to tell you, we're not going to release something on the market um, that's not fantastic. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I think feedback is really important, and you know, you touch on a point that I'm very passionate about. When I was at IPCPR, you know, I you know, I got a ton of free cigars. And, you know, you walk up to a different booth. They'd say, oh, put that out and do it. And I wouldn't do it because, you know, I think it, it's almost disrespectful. You know, you really can't ever appreciate a cigar unless you smoke the whole thing. There's been very few cigars I've had to put out, and that's not because I was – they were just not good. You know what I mean? It was just one of those things where I just couldn't – I was gag a maggot, you know. But, no, I, I really appreciate that. I think it's really important. you got to totally evaluate the blend. You know, in so is there when you guys go about like, you know, thinking up your blends? Is it, hey, I'm trying to hit this kind of market or this kind of smoker, or is it, hey, this is what I like? You know, what's kind of the sniff test when you guys go through, and what do you guys try to shoot for to start? Right now, the focus is market. Um, our our primary focus was a getting a value oriented stick out. So that's where one of the test blends that we've been working on. Um, comes to focus and we actually hit the nail on the head the first time through which is bizarre that really that actually never happens um, um, as for our boutique blends um, it's a much longer process what we if it doesn't come out on a scale of 1 to 10 a 10 in my opinion it's not going to come out and I mean quite honestly there's a bunch of products out there on the market that people smoke and go oh, yeah that's a good cigar um, but what we're looking for is that person that's like, damn, this is this is amazing. Uh, you know, and to share a good story about that, um, I was talking to the, uh, the owner of Strauss Tobacconist, um, Tim and Matt, and um, they're based out of Florence, Kentucky, and they were just giving me some feedback yesterday whenever I was doing a uh, routine follow-up call with them, and um, Matt explained to me, he was like, man, we were uh, – we're walking around the show, and I got a hold of your stick, and I was going to all these other cigar manufacturers, and they were wanting me to put out put out your stick and try another one. He goes, I smoked yours down to the nub. I couldn't stop. And, uh, I mean, it's cool. that's just an amazing it's a, thing to It's hear. an honor. It's, really, it's an honor, yeah. It really is. 
No, it's very, very cool. Like, you know, how uh, speaking of CPR, like, you know, uh, there was a lot of cool stuff that came out. It was my first show. You know, how do you guys think you did at the show? You know, what was it kind of the overall feedback from everyone? Because you guys, I mean, going into the show, you know, you weren't the general, you're not the CAO, you're not the Drew Estate. You know, how do you think you fared, you know, compared to your expectations going in? Um, I think we, we met our expectations, if not exceeded them. Our, our real focus at the show this year is to, A, have a presence, and B, network. Um, your first year at the show, people don't know who you are. They they honestly, uh, for back of a, lack of a better word, they don't give a crap, and that's okay. Um, but when they see us there next year, and they see us the year, next year after that, yeah. and after that, they're going to know that we're a true player in this market. And the great thing about it is IPCPR. We we didn't really know what to expect because this was our first year having a booth. Um, last year, Walter attended um, just to kind of network and see what it was all about. This year we had a booth. Uh, Walter and um, his wife, who is the vice president of the company, attended while I stayed here in Texas, and I hit all the accounts that weren't actually able to get to IPCPR, which is a strategy I don't think a lot of uh, it's pretty smart do. Um, but next year I think it's going to be absolutely, almost horrifically huge for us because the people that saw us this year and maybe walk past our booth or maybe just picked up a stick or your average trick-or-treater, as I like to call them, that came by and just grabbed a stick and kept on walking and didn't try it till probably three weeks later is going to come back and go, man, three weeks later when I smoked that cigar, that was that was phenomenal. And our booth itself was very modest, um, but we had a great presentation. The white leather chairs, um, the big the mural. We had the big mural of the Cremo Cigars mural in the background. And um, I mean, we had we had representatives from other cigar companies coming by, going, "Y'all have really got something special here." And I mean, even to hear that was an, a, a total honor. It really was. Yeah, I like the uh, <clears throat> Mark and I were chatting yesterday a little bit as we were making sure all the video worked and everything, and he was telling me that <clears throat> he didn't go to IPCPR, but he went to kind of sneak attack all the other people who weren't able to make it. I think that's 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 a good plan. I mean, if, if you have the manpower to do it, that's I think that's a good way to do it. It's rogue, uh, dude. I like it. Yeah, it's a sneak attack. The, tra the reference to the trick or treaters. That's that's. I could just I can envision. I've never been to IP IPCPR. Logan went this year. Um, I had every intention of going this year, but it didn't work out. But um, I can see people just walking by and like almost with their uh, with their big sack for the candy, just dropping it in, picking up one, drop it in, knock knock, trick or treat. That's funny. <laughs> That's exactly. You, you have that kind of you have that kind of person, and then you have the person that wants to meet the rock star. Um, you got the people that want to meet Jonathan Drew and Pete Johnson and so on and so forth, and they they want to go and take a picture with everybody, and that's cool. I mean, hell, if I'd gone this year, you know, I probably would have been running around doing the same thing. But <laughs> but um, IPCPR is a beast all on its own, and you know, with uh, with the record turnout this year, it's it. It's almost like having your cigar in a cigar shop that has every single other other cigar available to man. Um, you know, you have a small eight by eight booth. Whenever Padron and Perdomo have twenty booths all together making their one big booth, and to me, it's not important to spend our money on that. Um, it's important to spend our money on making sure we provide the best product. And um, I, I would imagine that the customer would kind of want that as well. That's uh, that's one thing, and uh, I'm just going to speak for myself. I can't speak for Logan, but since I've started doing the blog and we and doing the show, and we get a, a lot of uh, companies like yourself, smaller companies, newer companies come on with the, the boutique companies, and, and the the attention to detail, the uh, the pride that's put into the manufacturing, is uh, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I feel spoiled being able to smoke this stuff every day, and it's there's just so much there's so many good products out there and I mean I'm getting down to the end here um, I don't know if you guys can see that but I mean I'm I think that band off and nub it that's a good yeah. one. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there I'm getting there <laughs> yeah that's 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 where we're headed I mean this you guys have a nice a really nice product um, I mean I definitely call this medium body right in the middle of medium body maybe a little bit the spice is kicking up maybe a higher end of medium but uh, it's Really enjoyable product, um, <clears throat> Mark. You've been very gracious 
to uh, to to sit here with us for about we've been on for about an hour now. So um, I'll try to wrap this up. Um, I oh, do want, um, oh. before we wrap up, I do want to um, kind of put out a very special thanks to. Uh, there is a, uh, a Facebook group called CATS. It uh, stands for Cigar Aficionado Trades and Sales. And there's about 1,300 members in the CATS group. And um, Cromo Cigars is a very grassroots oriented company right now. And we really are relying on word of mouth. And I've got to say that the members of, of CATS have been huge in really making sure um, that the word of mouth gets out there for us. And, um, and for those of you that are watching that, that have never been a member of CATS before, um, it, it's a really great group to get in there and say whatever you want to say, talk about whatever cigars you want to. It's just a, basically an open Facebook forum, and it's like a family. And i gotta, I got to really express my thanks to all of those guys, and uh, all of y'all know who you are without me mentioning any names, um, but y'all definitely mean the world to us. Very cool. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I've, I've actually heard of that group. Um, I haven't checked it out yet, but I've heard of it, so we'll we'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll definitely have to get uh, get involved yeah, we'll with that. Get as well. this, I'll post it up on on um, on your page in your archives. I'll definitely get it posted to their page for you. Great, very cool. Appreciate that. So again, um, give us the rundown how everybody can find you. And you had mentioned uh, the shop that you wanted to give a shout out to that was Havana Jim Cigars. It looks like they're on on Twitter at Havana Jim. So. You can check them out. It doesn't look like they tweet very much, but they're on. They don't, so, yeah. um, they don't really do a whole lot of social media. They've got such a huge loyal member base. Without without social media, it's it's kind of bizarre, actually. Um, but they've definitely been huge for us. And um, you can find us at uh, www.cremocigars.com. That's C R E M O. Um, and you can also find us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash cremo dash cigars. And then on Twitter, you can follow us at at Cremo Cigars, you can follow me personally at at Mark underscore Germany, or um, you can follow our um, our Director of Operations, Josh, at uh, Josh underscore Cremo Cigars. Oh, you know what? I might not even be following Josh. <clears throat> I'll have to do that. So again, appreciate you coming out. Uh, I appreciate the cigars. These, I really like it. I don't want to, I don't want to gush too much, but... Um, this is a really nice smoke. I'm enjoying it a lot. We'll have Logan's review. I look forward review. to seeing y'all's reviews when y'all post them. Yeah, yeah, we'll have, uh, Logan, yeah Logan, <laughs> Logan sent his stuff over to me. I will get it posted tonight, I promise. It's just whenever oh. Logan writes anything, it has to go through the editor three or four hey, times. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 brother. That's why I do video reviews, man, because it's just easier. And you know, at work, that's why we got spell check, right? Now, Logan, are you going to be mad if I critique your review and uh, and uh, point out grammatical errors? Well, hopefully, as long as it took Robbie to post the damn thing, hopefully, it's got no no errors or issues. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I do what I can. No, that's cool, man. No, hell, you know, in the chat, I run the so Robbie and I, we you know, we host this together, and I I ask a few questions, he asks more, and I run the chat. And whenever we do things, I always spell stuff wrong. People are just used to it. They're just like, oh, it's Logan. <laughs> just kind of get used to it. It's a thing. It's branding. Yeah, that's that's your that's see that's that's your tag is I, Logan. Logan. I can't spell. I can't. Um, so again, Mark, really appreciate you spending the time. Uh, appreciate you guys having us on. And and we'll, like I said, well, the reviews will be posted. Uh, Logan's right later today. I'll get mine posted tomorrow. Or you know what? I, you know I'm gonna let that uh, I'm gonna let that Toro rest for a couple of days because it's just got through its travel. So maybe early next week. I, um, I'd even say you know I mean as much as I'd like you to get it posted ASAP, um, give it give it three four weeks in your humidor. It's it's just quite amazing. It really is. No, I it just based on the way that this one tastes after you know traveling across the country for you know five or six days, um, it, it's got a nice flavor. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so again, yeah, thanks for coming out. Uh, we appreciate you spending the time. You've been very gracious, and uh, we'll um, we'll look forward to everything you guys have coming out in the future. Thanks again, Mark. Robbie, Logan, thanks again. You'll have a great thanks, day. Mark. All right. Have thanks. a great day, Take brother. Care. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, guys. Uh, that's thanks again for coming out to another cigar chat. Uh, we will be back next Thursday. Um, I believe we have uh, Podman cigars coming on next Thursday, right, Logan? Tim. Yeah, Tim. Tim. Uh, Palawaka, or however you Tim, say his name. Tim is going to have some very interesting giveaways that are uh, sponsored by uh, none other than Drew Estates. Uh, Drew sweet. Estate. Um, I'll have a post for that later today with uh, some some tantalizing photos and things like that. So, again, uh, if you're watching this on the, the website is uh, RobbieRazReviews.com. 
If you're on, um, if you're checking us out on YouTube, go ahead and go to. You can see all the other uh, interviews that we've done on the YouTube channel. Uh, yep. RobbieRazReviews.com, um, at RobbieRazReviews on Twitter. Uh, I'm at Robbie Raz on Twitter, and Logan is at Logan at Dell. On Corporate Twitter. monkey. Corporate monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Dot com. That's that should just be your. You should instead of smoking Logan, it should just say Corporate monkey. Dude, corporate cube monkey. <laughs> All right, Done. guys, appreciate it. Uh, thanks, thanks guys. For coming out again. Take care.